I've been using photography and printmaking as my main media for a long time now, and for generations, those two have been used to impart important information and to spread it. I have a tendency to use silkscreen because it allows me to make large images and to manipulate color and surface. My work has been concerned lately with connection to place and the fear and anxiety that can drop away when we feel truly connected to a place. We've been dealing with interpersonal violence in America by placing victims, women, children, men in shelter. While it's life-saving, it also removes people from the comfort of their own home. I've been visiting domestic violence shelters in America and in Italy. Living spaces are set in a way that they appear to be homey, but have a quality of a stage set about them. Typically some wear and tear from populations coming and going and from the constraints of resources that most of these places have. I make these quiet images because I feel so passionate about this subject that I don't always trust myself to be non-alienating with the way that I talk about it. I like to let the pictures do that work for me. I just hope that I can remind people that this exists, it's an ongoing problem, one that transcends nation, and that shelters need funding, support, and our votes. I'm primarily known as a sculptor doing objects that are mathematical distortions based on things that already exist. I was always interested in making sculptures and things that occupy space, but I felt that sculpture proper was problematic and that there was a stasis. Dealing with ideas like expansion and contraction of the object through these compound mathematical distortions was a way to create a physical response to a work of art. Coming here to McCall, I'm making paintings that function as an analogy for some of my concerns as a sculptor. Thinking about things like spatial dissonance, now I'm thinking about optical dissonance and physical responses to images as opposed to objects. I started thinking about what painting would mean within my practice. Silk screens seem to be a perfect combination of handmade and mechanical processes that go together to make the final painting. I'm dealing with moments of optical dissonance and moments of reprieve. What I'm starting to get into is some more hard opticality. In essence, a deeper physical response to the works. There are many layers to the concepts behind my pieces. Man versus nature, uh, exploitation of animals to meet our needs. The list is endless about what we have done to our environment to make it a far more difficult place for animals to live. My sculptural work consists of a copper rod armature that I hand solder, and then I hand stitch various materials over the frame. The jack door has a Mexican jackrabbit head, California condor torso, and equine legs. It's the coming together of three endangered species to create a new species against extinction. The collages are directly related to my sculpture. A lot of the same imagery, but I really tried to get away from a literal narrative. I restricted myself to two different backgrounds, which are the inside covers of a 1959 mathematics book. There's an interesting setting for the collages, but it doesn't create a literal setting. But I mean, it's impossible for me to get away from my underlying theme that has been a thread throughout my work for the past 15, 20 years. I'm not looking for a more harmonious world. I think I'm bringing attention to the fact that everything is connected. Every little thing, from an ant to a human being, it's all one big chain. And we're the greatest predator of all. I'm Scott Constable, and I'm a partner in the artist team of Wow House. We do primarily large-scale public sculpture. Our work is known for community engagement, environmental stewardship, innovation, conviviality. 
We're here in Charlotte realizing a project in the neighborhood of Brightwalk, and it's called Scuppernong Commons. A lot of our projects start with a question of what makes a good day. How do things and places acquire meaning? There's so much new construction in Charlotte. It's hard to find the heart of a community or of the city. And we found that to be a little disorienting and imagine other people do too. So we wanted to have a sense of the home place within this neighborhood. Until a generation or two ago, all throughout the Southeast, almost every rural sediment would have a scuppernong vine growing. In the fall, there'd be a harvest, there'd be uh, jellies and jams and scuppernong wine. We thought, wouldn't it be interesting to reintroduce the scuppernong grape as a placeholder, a model for sustainable community scale agriculture? We wanted it to feel very authentic and natural, so we found a concrete mix that can be hand packed like an earthen clay. Once the structure's completed, we're hoping that it becomes a new tradition. The neighborhood comes together, they pick the grape, maybe they press it and they make the juice, maybe they're trading pies and recipes and coming up with new uses for it.